While researching a topic for an upcoming video, I've accidentally found a channel called Slots Available, followed by two Greek words that translate to eternal worship. The channel joined YouTube in the year 2021, on the 4th of January. The description of the channel reads, Players have enjoyed Minecraft. In the end. The rain wept again, with a new body to mourn. The channel seems to upload Minecraft gameplay videos, and the first video is titled Read.Slot. This video was uploaded half a year after the channel's join date. It's 9 seconds long, and it's filmed in black and white. In it, we can see a player seemingly just flying up into the sky. On the ground, we can see four holes arranged in a diamond formation, and for a single frame, we can also see four circles flash in the same formation. The audio in the video consists of nothing but what seems to be a noise of a bunch of bees flying around. So you can really tell the sound design is on point. We can get some more context by reading the description of the video. It says, quote, One of our dearest longtime players loading up a new world. Isn't it marvelous that? And that's where it cuts off. In order to see the complete sentence, we need to look at the video tags. The tags of this video are, They are us? Check if file loaded properly. Can't risk this time around. So the full sentence would be, Isn't it marvelous that they are us? So we can gather a few things from this first video alone. Given the phrasing of the description, it's obvious that whoever is running this channel is a different person from the player in the video. Not only is it a different person, but also it appears to be multiple people. From the tags, we can tell that the player is perhaps a part of this group, and that it seems to be a way of loading up a new Minecraft world. Apparently this wasn't the first attempt at doing so either. So what the hell does any of this mean so far? To get the bigger picture, we need to dive deeper into the videos of this channel, and the media connected to it. Ranging from a strange SoundCloud page, to a game that's meant to be used as an initiation tool for new members of this group. This is Slots Available, Eternal Worship. Shit, shit, wait, wrong intro. Checking out the video tags is something that we will be doing for every single video on this channel, as there are a lot more context clues and secrets to be found within them. That being said, let's check out the next video. The second video is titled Game Start. It got released 3 days after the first one and is for the most part a fairly normal 2.5 minute long gameplay video of a player who is clearly new to the game. They leave floating trees around everywhere and are pretty slow when it comes to using the inventory. There's not a lot of oddities in this video except for this cut that happens when the player stumbles upon a 1x1 one one hole in a hill. The diamond symbol appears again and after the cut the player finds themselves in a new biome. After passing what looks like a few fucked up trees made of stone and dirt, the player falls into a hole which then shows us a loading world screen. And that's where the video ends. A weird detail we can spot is that the aspect ratio of the footage changes as soon as the loading world screen appears. Is this an editing error? Or perhaps was it intentional? The description has nothing of note and there is a single video tag. It reads, there's too many in the sky. An interesting thing about the video house building is that just by comparing its thumbnail with the previous video, we can notice that the aspect ratio of the game is different and that the person playing in the house building video is using a texture pack. It seems to be another ordinary gameplay video until near the end when the same buzzing sound from the first video can be heard. After a lag spike and a cut, the player stumbles across Steve McBumbles, otherwise known as a really fucked up looking bee that has the face of Steve. It appears to be in the middle of the same diamond shaped hole formation from the first video. Was that video perhaps from the perspective of the bee? That would explain why the buzzing noise was constant and how the person filming just flew up into the sky. Now I was gonna put some bullshit here about how bees can't actually see color and that's why the video was in black and white, but bees do actually see color, albeit different than us humans. You learn something new every day. When the player gets close to the bee, the video abruptly ends after an apparent crash. The description once again just describes what's happening in the video, but the tags are way more interesting this time around. Switch places. Again? Return items. The last tag could allude to the fact that around the 1 minute mark of the video, there's a cut, after which the player loses their 2 logs in a seed. But that just me spitballing here, he could've just put them away in his inventory, I don't fucking know. The other 2 tags however seem to explain what happened at the end of the last video. Could the player from that video have switched places with the player from this one? We can't tell for sure without looking at the next video in the series, titled Mining Session. 
This video immediately begins with a single frame shot of an acacia biome at night. And right after that we can see the same player from the last video preparing to go on a mining trip. On his way to the cave a bee can be seen on the right side of the screen. And during the mining there is another cut to a frame of the player looking at a bee doing its best Mandela catalog intruder impression and trying to stay hidden inside the floor and walls of the house. Right before hearing the buzzing once more, the diamond logo appears again and the player starts to run up the cave staircase, seemingly in a panic, but once they reach the surface, they are no longer in the acacia biome, but rather in a snowy one with the only thing to look at being a poppy. And once the player breaks it, the aspect ratio changes again with the loading terrain screen appearing. This seems to confirm the theory that the two players did indeed switch places, and that this is the moment the switch happened. However, there is one issue with that game theory. In the game start video, the player also destroys and collects a poppy, perhaps in the same exact place where the new player came out of the hole. But the game start player only seems to switch places after falling into the hole, and not upon breaking the flower, which would make the times of the switch inconsistent. The message we get this time around when combining the description and the tags is, Our dearest most player is seen going deeper. He doesn't seem to find anything, sadly enough, however he returns to understand the flowering. This probably talks about how the player from the two videos we just watched is starting to understand what's going on. The same sadly can't be said about us. Animal Farm is not an allegory for communism, but rather a video where we once again follow the player from the Game Start video. They seem to have progressed a bit and even have their own pens where they're keeping a bunch of animals. An interesting thing to note is that the items in the player's inventory are a seed and a dirt block. Items which the other player had after the cut near the end of the house building video. However, this may just be a coincidence. The player heads out to a hill and once again the buzzing is heard. The player seems to ignore it, mines a single stone block and after a cut goes from having 0 XP levels to 3, so we can assume that they killed something. Only issue with that is that the sword they're carrying hasn't even been used. So either the player killed something without even using the sword, or they got that XP through some other means. Once they return to their house, all of the animals are gone, and the only audible thing is the buzzing. The description doesn't reveal anything to us, and there's only two tags, nutritious and wrong farm. We haven't seen any other farms at all yet, so what wrong farm is referring to is unknown. Who knows, maybe the whole channel is actually trying to make us read the book. Just the day after Animal Farm, a 15 second long video titled Sky was released. We can't really tell who the person recording the video is. It's definitely not the one from house building, so could it be the player from the last video? The aspect ratio matches. Whoever they are, the only thing they have in their inventory is a flint and steel. When they look up, they see that the sky is covered in bees, perhaps fully because they span through the entire length of the render distance. It looks like the player tried to light a fire, but the flint and steel is non-functional. If you recall, in game start the tag was there's too many in the sky, which we can now tell is referring to whatever the fuck is going on here. The video ends with a long beeping noise as the words unauthorized access are seen at the top of the screen. The tags are can't be helped and no fire, no fire, no fire, no fire, no fire, no fire. The second one seems like someone speaking in a panic manner. Maybe the fire is what keeps the bees away and that's why the flint and steel was unusable. Furthermore, the description of the video is entirely different from what we've come to expect so far. Rather than praising the player in the video, the description seems way more formal and antagonistic. Convict 2, Trespassing. Is this a new player who isn't supposed to be here? Why are they referred to as Convict 2? Who's Convict 1? On the same day, another video would be uploaded titled Load.Slot. Another very short video filmed in black and white. Right from the get-go, we can tell looking at the description that whoever is filming this video is not just another oblivious player. It's someone from within the group running this channel, perhaps even the person from the first video. They are seen placing two sunflowers right below two bees and then proceed to spawn another bee and place a lily of the valley below it instead. The video then ends. A day later, the next video, Building Tutorial Path, would be released. It's another short video showing us a new player, the description even confirms that. They're in a super flat world, and their inventory is filled to the brim with the lily of the valley flower. Right before opening a chest in front of them, the texture pack changes. The hunger bar is now represented by bowls filled with honey. I mean, it's either honey or piss, you can't really tell. 
After making a path with a golden shovel, the player gets teleported into a void and that's where this entry ends. From the tags we can tell that this is punishment for this player. So is he the convict from Sky? It can't be the same person so maybe this is convict 1. This seems plausible but the description calls this person a new player. On top of that, the aspect ratio of the footage is the same as the one in load slot in the next video we'll be taking a look at, titled Cave Exploration. Cave Exploration is perhaps the strangest video yet, because it follows the perspective of multiple players. At first, there seems to be only two people. The one with 3 XP levels and the other with 11. The footage constantly cuts and while POV of the player with 3 XP seems simple enough to follow, the other player's POV constantly cuts to events that have already happened. At one point, one version, if you can even call it that, of the player with 11 levels falls into lava. This affects the player with 3 levels as they start burning as well. However, there is another version of the player with 11 levels that is seemingly unaffected. The one that fell into lava burns to death and we can see that there name is a date 210124 at midnight and 59 minutes this is either the 21st or the 24th of january in the year 2024 or 2021 respectively we never seem to follow this pov afterwards considering that the player with 11 xp is always at 11 xp even after the apparent burning once again there seems to be two versions of this player an interesting detail is that these multiple recordings of the same pov began only after the player got glimpse of the b at the 15 seconds mark in the video. Now at first I thought that this was the player we followed back in game start and animal farm. The screen ratio is the same and they're both using the same texture pack, that being the default one. However this is the first time we've seen this HUD size, as the one in those videos was a lot bigger. And from the hand at the start of this video we can see that the person has an Alex skin, which is also the first time we've seen someone in this series use a skin that's not Steve. The tags are more interesting this time, one of them is a time frame, 1 minute and 3 seconds. I went through all of the videos we've seen so far but I haven't been able to find anything of note at this timestamp in any of them. The other tag leads us to a screenshot of a one by one hole in the wall. Very spooky. Roller coaster experience appears to be more what we've come to expect so far. It looks like the player from house building and mining session has made a return and is riding around in a minecart, although their hunger bar is missing. The few oddities we can see are floating torches and a bee hiding inside a wall. Once the player reaches the end of the tunnel, we can see the hole that we just saw in the screenshot. The player teleports seemingly into the sky and the video ends once there's no more rails. The most information we get from this video is from the tags. Whoever this player is, they are of great use and are being rewarded by the channel owners. However, this one tag stands out from the rest. Larval. Not to be mistaken with larva. When something is described as larval, it means that said thing has left its egg but is not yet completely developed. Thank you Cambridge Dictionary. My guess is that the person in this video in particular is starting to understand more and more what's going on, but why the group running this channel has taken a liking to them, I'm not entirely sure. Boat travel doesn't give us much to work with either. It's very similar to the previous video, except the player once again seems to be the one from game start. However, it's not the default texture back, so who this person is exactly, I'm currently not sure. There's a B signing at the start in the middle of the video, and once the player passes this gate, they get teleported into the sky and and that's once again where the video ends. The tags are the same as the ones in the last video, except there's a few new ones, the most notable one being employment. It looks like the two players we've been following are being employed into the organization running this channel. But what for? What do employees even do? Are they forced to work minimum wage 9 to 5 desk jobs or is their work something greater? Honestly anything's better than that first thing but moving on. This is by far the longest video on the channel, called Player Beginning. What sets this one apart from all the others is the way it's recorded, because, well, it's in fucking we are. The description confirms that this is a new player. One of the things that stuck out to me right at the start here is how the player sees two bees, but it's not the ugly ones with the Steve face that we've been seeing since the start. These are just some regular ass bees. There is four cuts during the video to a poppy in the sky being replaced by blocks while a Steve bee is watching to the left. What this symbolizes however, I have no idea yet. The tags further support our theory that the players we see on this channel are for the most part unaware of what they've stumbled upon. The tag there's too many of them in the walls is most likely talking about the bees that we've seen, well, inside the walls a couple of times now. 
The most important part of this video is this link that leads us to an image of an employee handbook. There is a lot of information we can get from these few uncensored lines of text alone. First up, there's three sections that employees must follow the steps of when it comes to their interactions with the player, or rather, lack of interactions. The first section, titled Observation, mentions the use of drones. So we finally have an official name for the Steve Bees. They're drones that the employees use to observe and spy on players. The second line of this section is redacted near the end, but it specifically states that you must not intervene with the player's actions. Section 2, titled Judgment, is for the most part redacted, but we can see that there is something that is not allowed, probably the use of fire, as so far it seems that the only time the owners of the channel and the drones got angry was when the player from Sky tried using the flint and steel to create fire. There's another line that reads, Reward Player which we have seen twice now. Both the player from Game Start and House Building respectively got rewarded. What this reward entails other than apparent employment of the players is so far still a mystery. Section 3 is completely redacted and the only thing left that we can read out is at the very bottom of the image. Apes and Secta, sworn to the Queen. The only thing to note in Building Tutorial Hedge is that in it we once again see the player from Building Tutorial Path. After building a hedge that is deemed imperfect by whoever wrote the description, they are teleported into the void. The order in which they scroll through their hotbar seems to be very specific. Thank you to this person who typed the order out in the comments, but it's currently unknown if this is of any significance. The tags of this video, however, have the biggest revelation to us yet. One of the tags is, the walls are the sky, so that means that there's too many of them in the sky and there's too many of them in the walls are synonymous phrases. The most important tag here is a link to a YouTube video. The channel that uploaded this video isn't slots available. It's an entirely new channel titled... <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> you shitting me? Okay. <clears throat> the channel that uploaded this video is titled Dawn Gaming. It's a channel with only 9 videos and its description reads He used to showcase gameplay of Terraria and other means of protections, but he lost his battle. We will upload proof of his hard work. Once again, it seems that the person recording and the uploader are not the same person. Another very interesting thing to note is that not a single video on this channel is a Minecraft gameplay video. This video in particular is Terraria gameplay, but the games vary from Gary's mod all the way to fucking Space Funeral of all things. So from this point on, we will look at both of these channels. In the next video on the main channel, titled Emergency Measures, we're following another new player. This time it's a member of the management, as the description calls them. Aside from the god-awful texture pack, an interesting thing that stands out in this video is how the bees got attracted to the campfire. Another thing to note is that the world we're seeing here is the exact same one from player beginning. The bees we're seeing here got attracted to the campfire that the player from that video placed. After an apparent reboot of the system, the campfire and the bees are gone, replaced by those one by one holes that we're accustomed to by now. There are two clues we get from this video's tags. First one clearly states that the VR player got successfully punished by management, and the other says they are no longer larva. Does this mean that the two players that got rewarded in third larval became a part of the management? Were they finally recruited? Village gameplay is a video in the style of cave exploration, because it follows two players' perspectives. They both have different flowers in their inventories, a cornflower and a rose bush. For the sake of finally getting creative and naming the two players something different other than, well, players, we'll call these two corn and rose. The only thing of note corn does for the duration of the video is just walking around and encountering a couple one by one halls. Rose, however, encounters several oddities. The first one being a giant fuck off tower leading into the heavens in the middle of nowhere, and the second one being encounters with several drones in the village houses. Now, this part is important. I want you to etch this into your mind because it's a secret tool that will help us later. Remember how many times Rose hits these bells. Got that? Okay, good. After hitting the pot holding a flower in the middle of the bells, we get to see a quick section from the employee handbook in regards to how drones work. 
As we can see, drones are not allowed to move at all when the players can observe them. Under section 55, we can see that one of the rewards for the players is indeed employment, leading us to believe that the two players that got teleported into the sky in boat travel and roller coaster experience both got employed by the channel owners. The final shot of the video is Rose hitting a bee that's in the middle of four holes. Dawn Gaming's next video is titled Failure. It's only 36 seconds long, and let me just say that the lag here is immense. How the fuck is this guy playing Terraria like this? Anyway, there's a rose bush next to the player in this video, but we can't really be sure if this is actually rose from village gameplay. After a few random floating tombstones appear, the player places a campfire and that's when a bunch of bees, presumably drones, appear. The description and tags confirm that whatever this black pillar thing is supposed to be is a hole through which the drones come through. So I think it's fair to assume that that giant pillar from the previous video was also a hole in the sky, or rather wall. The last frame of the video is barely visible text reading, they got in through the rain. As for the main channel, the new video is fairly short, clocking it at a mere 23 seconds, but what we can get from it is far more important. The video is from the perspective of the management again. They are surrounded by a bunch of drones with an expanded diamond pattern of holes in the ground. After flying away, there's text saying how more employees are required, after which the video abruptly ends. In the description, a line that sticks out is, are we human yet? Implying that the drones or whoever is running this channel is sentient, but not necessarily human. We can also find a link. The link leads to an itch.io page, and the page gives us a downloadable file, that being a game. The creator of it is called Cohive, and the game itself is titled Employee Education Entertainment. Now, me being the incredibly intelligent internet user that I am, I proceeded to download and play this incredibly suspicious game. And here's where things get really interesting. Alright gang, we're at a halfway mark of this quote unquote investigation and here's what we've got so far. We have a mysterious YouTube channel that posts Minecraft gameplay videos of people who may or may not be aware that they're being recorded. The players are constantly monitored by drones, bees that act as sort of cameras that are only able to move when the player doesn't have a clear line of sight on them. The drones are operated either by employees or management, people or entities tasked with evaluating the players and seeing if they're worthy of being employed and expanding the hive. We've seen that all of these things aren't necessarily tied to just Minecraft, as the drones seem to come from a place that is not located in any specific game or program known to us. The drones and management really fucking hate fire, hence all the anti-fire behavior we've been seeing throughout the videos. There's a channel tied to slots available called Dawn Gaming that was seemingly aware of all of the things going on and tried to prevent whatever it is that the people running the main channel are doing. Their end goal seems to be expanding the hive and serving the queen, neither of which we have much information on right now. But what's the point of the players switching positions? How do they even get deemed as suitable for becoming new employees? What's the point of all the flower symbolism other than telling the players apart? Fun fact, one of the reasons that this video took so fucking long to make is that my PC's motherboard died during the script writing, so that led to an entire week of no progress. But I digress. Hope you're comfortable, because we shall continue diving deeper into these channels after the commercial break. No one sponsors me. Employee Educational Project is a game made by Karokawa Game Studio. Upon startup, we can see a really bare bones main menu, accompanied by a really annoying sound in the background. What follows after pressing the start button is a series of six questions, each of them revolving around the employee handbook. We get a few confirmations from this game. First of which being that fire is indeed harmful to the drones and or employees. In question 3, we see mention of a terminal. According to the handbook, a terminal is used to judge players. An employee's assigned drone will always be on the left side of the terminal. Where else have we seen a drone that's on the left side from the employee's perspective? That's right, in the VR video. Addendum 3, Management, confirms that each employee must obey the management and questioning it or disobeying may lead to being fired. So we have a general hierarchy of the organization now. At the bottom there's drones, 
They're used by employees who are tasked with watching over players and work for the management. From the sections talking about being sworn to the queen, we learn that on top of all that we've just mentioned 10 seconds ago is the queen, to whom even the management answers. Section 3 is the uncensored oath from player beginning. Nothing comes from nothing. Bees, insects. Sworn to the queen. The bees, insects part is Google Translate's fault if it's wrong, by the way. Don't blame that on me. Hey, remember when I told you to remember the amount of times Rose hits the bell in village gameplay? Where well, here's where that comes into play, smartass. If on question 6 we put the numbers 161, we get access to question 7. Once we enter through this doorway, we appear to be in some sort of village. I I think it's a village at least, I'm not sure man. Going to the top of the screen, we see a bunch of drones moving across the screen, and above them are three more drones watching over them. We're chased by whatever this white square is supposed to represent, and when it catches us, the message unauthorized access appears and the game closes. This is where I hit a roadblock, because I assume there's some combination or order in which you need to interact with the numbers on the buildings or these supposed windows, but for the life of me I couldn't figure out what it was. A thing to note is that during the initial 6 questions we can see that the numbers 3, 4 and 5 are framed, whereas the other numbers aren't. I tried messing around with a combination of these numbers, but nothing works. So if any of you would like to give it a shot, I'll leave a link to the game's site in the description. Although I am legally obligated to say that I take zero responsibility if you get a virus and or receive info of hot singles in your area after downloading this game. Also you need RPG Maker to actually run it. In Fishing Living, we once again follow Rose, who right at the start catches a rift while fishing. What's a rift you ask? I have no fucking clue. Rose eats the thing and immediately loses two hunger bars only to get him back in less than a second. After a couple seconds Rose also gets a bottle of honey which they then proceed to drink. Some more time passes when Rose proceeds to open their inventory and uh, that's a poppy. So we can interpret this in two ways. The first one being that this isn't Rose, considering we were led on to believe that types of flowers have certain meanings, like how a lily of the valley is a convict's flower. So this may be an entirely new player. But that contradicts the texture packs being different players rule. The second interpretation, and the one I'm willing to believe, is that not every flower is special. Here's what I mean by that. So far we've seen that almost every player that's not a convict has in some way, shape or form encountered a poppy. Whether it's in their inventory or just stumbling upon it in a significant place. The rosebush and cornflower were flowers that were only significant in village gameplay, so we could more easily differentiate the two players. At the end of the video, Rose turns around to their house and sees something at their window. The description mentions the channel owners messed up, and from the tags we can discern that this new entity is named the watching thing. Normal gameplay is anything but what the name implies. It's a continuation from the last video and Rose is just duplicating the rift in the crafting table, hellbent on destroying a pay to win server's economy. During the process, the watching thing is outside just, well watching Rose. After exiting their house and encountering a drone, Rose is teleported to a small place where they place their poppy, effectively delaying their world. The tags tell us the channel owners don't know who the watching thing is or why it keeps watching. We also get a link to a SoundCloud page filled with bangers such as Going over the music library of this caliber was a very grueling task for little old me, considering one of the songs, if you can even call it that, has a fucking jump scare near the start. Okay. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Aside from some of the track names, there's nothing of note that I could find, but I'll leave the link to the SoundCloud page in the description for the more curious of you. Duality Players is the most normal video we've seen so far. It's just two friends playing Minecraft in an actual multiplayer server without any of the world switching bullshit. We don't know the name of the person recording, but their friend is called Mauer24. At the start of the video, the time of day randomly switches from daytime to nighttime, and once again we see the black pillar. We get a quick glimpse at another section of the employee handbook, but it's just more of the same. Convicts must be punished, do not interact with the watching thing. 
Our protagonists reach the black pillar and the video ends. The tags mention that the players didn't see the sky and that they're not larva, at least not yet. Another fairly cryptic video, Pyramid Activity is one that I can barely make sense of. Pyramid Activity gives us an incredibly hard to discern number of POVs. It might be one or it might be three. We're witnessing the promotion of employee A. One thing to note is that there's three layers of the pyramid. The top layer where there's flowers, the middle layer where you can look down to the hole, and the hole itself. At the end of the video we see the words access authorized, welcome. The exact opposite of the unauthorized access message we get when we get caught in the game we played earlier. However, there still isn't any apparent code we can get from this video, so we'll just move on. The description of celebration states that this recording is made by the management themselves. The message from the video combined with the tags kinda paints the bigger picture of what's going on in the video. It states that the first convict was captured 5 years ago. He tried to resist but he failed. Perhaps this is in relation to Don Gaming as we also know that he failed in his mission to resist. An interesting point however is how the tags mentioned that there was no rain in the sea, whereas in those Terraria videos it's clearly stated that the drones got in through the rain. So what gives? After this sort of chilling message, historical recreation is to be productive soon. Celebration ends. On the same day, 26th of July 2021. Dawn Gaming would upload the video Space Funeral Oddity Final. In the title, we get a date, 24th of January 2016, five years before Celebration was uploaded. So we can deduct that the owner of the Dawn Gaming channel during that time period is indeed Convict 1, seeing how the channel is currently no longer owned by the person who recorded all of those videos. Considering I know jack shit about Space Funeral, I got a friend of mine to help me look for any oddities in these videos. The main ones are, you fucking guessed it, the same diamond pattern of holes. Once the player enters, uh, face? They see a skull that says, wrong sky, can't comprehend we will force your return. So clearly the management and I are one and the same, considering I can't comprehend this game either. There is a single video tag here, commemoration. The next day we'd get Space Funeral Test 1, a video recorded two years before Space Funeral Oddity Final. The description calls the player Clements and states that this is the first time he used RPG Maker Media. He calls this a possible win considering the hive as he calls it was barely present. The background music of the video is an 8-bit version of that one song that YouTubers constantly use when they want to set a melancholic tone. You know the one, I'll play it right now. This isn't really relevant to anything, it just kinda annoys me. Anyway, we get more mentions of the hive being unable to perceive and understand the sky here and then Clements encounters a drone which he swiftly disposes of. The next fiend he encounters is the watching thing that says nothing and fucking one shots Clements. Another video where we follow Maurer and his friend now named Cielo21 is Old Memory. It has this really annoying 3D glasses effect during the entire duration of it. We can deduce using the title of the video and the Minecraft version they're playing on that this takes place before duality players. During their chat we can see that they mentioned a lag spike, which was also mentioned in the description of Space Funeral Test 1, indicating that the hive is somehow messing with the players. We catch glimpse of a note to all employees. A note to all employees. The remembrance begins. Memories from the year 2010 of our queen and onwards will be provided for obligatory consumption. Accept them as... Mauer and Cielo stumble upon the four holes and after a while a buzzing noise can be heard. Mauer drops down the hole and the video ends. Old Trick doesn't bring any new stuff to the table. Maurer and Cielo are on a newer version of Minecraft Alpha and encounter a supposed new biome. We get a really interesting image of the employee handbook. The image depicts a giant hole in the ground referred to as an entrance to the vast as seen by mankind. So now we pretty much have undeniable proof that whoever is behind all of this is definitely not human. Whether it's some fucked up computer program or an unknown entity, we can't be sure. The video doesn't really have anything else interesting except a few already placed torches in a cave where the two players haven't even been yet. Meanwhile on the Dawn Gaming channel we get the video Gary's Mod Car, recorded in 2014. The description reads, Me and Jonah playing some Gary's Mod, just having some dumb fun. In a conversation he also mentioned having weird holes and poppies in his inventory in Minecraft. Odd. 
That's what I remember Clemens texting me on that day. So, Clemens is not the one running Dawn Gaming at the time before the takeover of the channel. There's a Mediafire link in the tags, however, at the time of making this video, the file is gone. In the video near the start, we can spot a fucked up looking TF2 Pyro model. After driving around in a makeshift car, Clements and Jonah enter a Minecraft house, and that's where the video ends. The video that follows Gary's mod car is Gmod Hovercraft, a short video of Clements driving through a tunnel in Gmod and getting teleported to another map. At the end he bumps into a city scanner from Half-Life 2, which he calls a manifestation of the drones in the description. From the tags we get this image, which has the file name Whole Contained. Messing with the image's brightness, however, doesn't reveal anything else. Last Day, recorded in 2016, marks the death of Clements M. Johnson. From the tags, we learn that Clements could hear the management celebrating his defeat, which ties into the celebration video from the main channel. How Clements got defeated or how he died, I couldn't tell you, because it's never once explained. 5 is a very strange video. We can't really tell exactly who the player is, but after falling into a one by one hole, he gets teleported to an entirely yellow place where constant buzzing is heard. He looks into the sky and sees a Steve face, after which the video ends. The tags in the description say how the player witnessed the queen and how she has many faces. Another thing to note is the tag, the end comes in fives. Honestly, if that's supposed to be the queen, that's kinda underwhelming. In building tutorial decoration 1, we once again see the convict from the previous tutorial videos, but this time with only 5 lilies of the valley in his inventory. He places down some bee nests and then sees the watching thing in the distance. The player's name is revealed to be Fortress of Fives, as he says hello to the watching thing in chat. And then we get perhaps one of my favorite images from the entire series, that being this one. The text next to the image of the watching thing reads, Employee's Handbook, Addendum 24. Revision 2. The Watching Thing. Possible countermeasures in origin. As a side effect of the procedure, it may have been human Therefore, she may It is a previous denizen of the vast. If that is the case, immediate action must be taken in order to neutralize it. It is us? And then the diamond symbol. So the Watching Thing is somehow related to Clements. It can't actually be Clemens because he encountered it in Space Funeral Test 1. The capitalized she in the handbook probably refers to the queen. Another confirmation is that the watching thing comes from the big ass hole we saw in the other employee handbook image that is the entrance to the vast, whatever that is. The tags of this video also give us this message, titled Machinery. The text reads, Processing Machinery Operation Guide for Humans. Step 1. Input the subject into slot A. Step 2. Ensure that the subject is fully injected into column A. Step 3. Begin the process via switch A1. Listen for the whirring and breathing of the machinery. Their hearts should be separated into small shards before step 4. Step 4. Transit the unrefined into column B. Insert fuel into slot B. Step 5. Repeat step 3. Use switch B1. Step 6. Repeat step 4 until it reaches the deposit column. Take the refined from therein. So obviously this machine is designed for human use, meaning that the management or hive cannot operate it. Therefore, it's either because they're fucking bees or they don't actually have a physical body to operate the machine with. The subject could mean multiple things, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually another human. What's being refined during this process is sadly unknown. Meanwhile on the Dawn Gaming channel, we just get a silly bee hopping video where we once again see the fucked up pyro, which is probably just another drone manifestation. When translated, the name of the latest video is 4, Hope. The person playing is called 24 Reverberations. They call the watching thing Son of Pangrammaton. After a long cryptic chat, 24 Reverberations rings the bell three times and says begin, as the video ends. The description says that the first round of chess is coming to an end. The tags mention the daughter of Alkonost. Alkonost is a creature from Slavic folklore, a bird with the head and tits of a woman. Quote, Alkonost makes amazingly beautiful sounds, and those who hear these sounds forget everything they know and want nothing more ever again. Which kind of resembles the queen we've heard so much about. Another interesting thing to consider is that in folklore, when the eggs that Alconost has laid hatch, a terrible thunderstorm appears, and we did hear that the drones got in through the rain in a previous video. Just more food for thought. 
we have two videos left, one on the main channel and one on the Dawn Gaming channel. Erase slot just shows an employee, supposedly the one from all the way back in the first video, placing down a campfire and dropping into hole, as the number one inside the Omega symbol appears on the screen. The tags mention how the rain is returning. This is the last video on the slot's available channel. Dawn Gaming's newest video is titled Conclusion 1. The gameplay is from the game off. The person playing seems to actually be the watching thing this time around. His class is savior and his state is pure. He reaches chapter Omega, on his way to face the queen. During the actual fight, the watching thing has the ability to hatch, and once it hatches, the video ends. The hatching might be a reference to the eggs of Alconost hatching, hence why the mentions of the return of the rain. The tags are Act 1, Finite Reinterpretation. And with that, the series draws to a close. Well, at least the first part of it. So, what can we make of all of this? Honestly, I kinda don't fucking know. Take this part of the video as both a sort of overall short explanation and a critique from my end. So, TLDR, the series has a lot of characters. Like, a lot. It's never just one person experiencing anomalies, but rather an entire group of people. The only two characters that show up consistently are The Watching Thing and Clements. Rose, Maurer and Cielo are all just recurring characters in some videos, but they don't seem to be that important to the plot. Whatever is happening, it has been in effect for years now. But what the purpose of it all is, other than just appeasing the queen and expanding the hive, is unknown. What the queen is, is also a mystery. There have been many mentions of the vast, but we got no info in that place other than the entrance to it being a big fuck off hole. I went into this project thinking it was just gonna be some lame ass low effort creepypasta filled with jump scares, but I was really pleasantly surprised. Some critique I would give to the series is how near the end some stuff just felt kinda completely random, such as the final conversation with the watching thing. Suddenly there's mentions of quote unquote your kind and honestly that entire conversation kinda fell flat for me but to each their own. There haven't been any new videos in more than a year now on either of the channels. Whether the series is just on hiatus until the next act or if it's fully over, I can't really tell. Either way, I'd be happy to chat about the series or any other dumb shit in my new Discord server. Whoa, what a plug. If you have any questions or just wanna chat, I'd be happy to do so over there. If you liked the video, consider liking and subscribing. If not, I will send a swarm of bees to your address. Follow me on social media and thank you to all the wonderful Patreon supporters over on my Patreon. That's it. Bye bye.